Have you ever wondered where all the rainwater goes? Or the snow once it melts? Or the water in your sink, tub or toilet after you've used it? This wastewater flows through the underground sewer system to a treatment plant. The plant removes most of the pollutants, then releases the water into a lake or river. The underground sewer network feeds into a regional interceptor, which is a kind of sewer highway that runs to the treatment plant. The action begins at the plant's pumping station. It doesn't look much from above, but the building extends some 15 storeys below ground, right through solid rock. The wastewater collects in huge underground wells. It's not a pretty sight. It's full of dirt, rubbish and, well, you know the rest. It also contains high levels of phosphorus, a poisonous element in the nitrogen family, harmful to waterways because it promotes the growth of algae. The water flows from the wells to giant pumps that force it to the surface. The plant has backup generators to keep the pumps working in case of a blackout, and devices to prevent water from backing up should a pump have to be shut down for servicing. Once the waste water reaches the surface, it flows through the pumping station down discharge channels leading to the treatment building. Along the way, it's sprayed with either aluminium sulphate or ferric chloride, two chemical coagulants. They gradually transform phosphorus in the water from liquid to solid, so it can be removed later on. Once the water reaches the treatment building, it flows through screens. This preliminary filtration removes any solids larger than 2.5 centimetres in diameter, such things as stones, paper and plastic. Giant presses compact this rubbish, squeezing out the excess water. Trucks then haul the stuff to a landfill, where it's buried. The wastewater, meanwhile, flows into large tanks called grit chambers. Grit refers to the particles in the water, such as gravel, that are inorganic, meaning they don't decompose or burn. These particles, some as tiny as a grain of sand, gradually settle to the bottom. Then they're pumped out and trucked to the landfill. To remove organic particles, mainly phosphorus, they add a polymer, a type of chemical compound. This demonstration shows what happens. Remember as the waste water left the pumping station, it was sprayed with a coagulant. That transformed the phosphorus in the water into solid particles. The polymer solution completes the process. It binds those particles, forming what are called flocks, masses of phosphorus that look like snowflakes. They're heavier than water, so they sink to the bottom. And that's exactly what occurs in the plant's clarifier tanks. It takes about two hours for the flocks to settle at the bottom, forming a layer of sediment called sludge. A system of rakes and pumps collects it and transfers it to the sludge treatment building. Unless testing shows a need for additional treatment, the clarified, fully treated wastewater now flows to what's called the outfall, a series of channels that discharge into the river. In the sludge treatment building, they spray the wet sludge with another type of polymer. This further solidifies it, so that the filter presses can more easily squeeze out the water. Most of the sludge goes into giant incinerators to be burned. The ashes go into a landfill. The gas that the incinerators emit powers several machines that dry and transform the remaining sludge into pellets. These pellets are sold as organic fertilizer. When it arrived at the plant, the waste water was full of contaminants that can harm life. Now after treatment, it contains 80% fewer suspended solids and 75% less phosphorus. And it also smells a lot better.